16 years old Kamsi Yochuku in Kechinyere Ume, who emerged as a top scorer with an outstanding mark of 360, is the highest achiever in the 2023 UTME. Kamsi, a student of Deeper Life High School in Mowe, Ogun State, says her major role model is Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumoyi and Dr. Ben Carson. The Anambra State Bond student says she has always been a lover of chemistry, where she scored 99 out of 100. Joining us now is Kamsi Yochuku in Kechinyere, Ume, UTME highest scorer. Good morning, Kamsi. Welcome to the morning show and congratulations. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. So how did you check your result? And when you saw that result, you know, how did you feel? Because there's been so much talk about how people check their results, whether the result will have a photograph embossed or not. Take us through that process before we now focus specifically on, on, on you yourself. Um, okay, when the results came out, I was in school and they announced that the results were out like seven days after I read the jam. It was a Tuesday when they told us that the results were out. So Wednesday, that Tuesday, I went to my guidance counselor and I asked her to call my mom for me and tell her that the results were out and that she should check it. So that Wednesday morning, the guidance counselor called me into her office and then she phoned my mom. So I spoke to my mom and then my mom was the one who told me my results, my score. So I, I was not the one that checked it personally, it was my mom. But the results slip, your results slip, what does it look like? Because Jam, you know, put out a statement, they are saying that the results slip must have the photograph of the candidate? I haven't seen my results slip personally, the jam printout, I haven't seen it. But I've seen the slips of my other classmates who have printed out their own results. So yes, there's like a photograph of them, I think about two, one from the N9 and then one from the jam registration photo, yeah. Right, so Kamsi, we're so proud of you. Thank and you. you say this is your first attempt at writing the UTM. Some people yes, have written ma'am. this, you know, more than <laughs> five times <laughs> and not gotten anywhere to <laughs> Why did I look at you? But let me just, I'm so, <laughs> we're so proud of you. So Thank tell you. us, I mean, you've shared the preparation stage. It's so great to see a young girl like you at only 16 years old, you know, having achieved such a feat. You've talked about how elated you were when you heard that you could score that result. But tell us yes, the process, yes. because greatness has a process. What was the process of you arriving as the best performing student in UTME 2023? Is it my process of preparation? Of your studying, your preparation. What did you do? Was there anything special that you did towards preparing, just for other people to learn as well? Okay, I think the most special thing I did during my preparation was pray, praying. I prayed a lot. Then I started early. I started preparation for the jam exam. Immediately I entered SS3. Okay. I started reviewing past questions, just reading my books. And then in school, my school, Deeper Life High School, we, we had like lots of classes, tests and retests, just trying to get us prepared. We had mock examinations of the jam. They tried to get us to use our time well, to know how to time ourselves. And then I, me personally, I read my books. I solved a lot of past questions, just trying to familiarize myself with the kind of question that they can bring out. And then, as I said before, I prayed. So, well done. Yeah. So, one thing I know about academic success is that it doesn't come by reading, it comes by a reading habit. Okay. For the sake of Nigerians watching out there, can you tell us about your reading habit daily? Are you reading rigor? Okay, my reading habits. In school, we have these like set times in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the night. They call them preps. So there's morning, afternoon, and night preps. So that's where I do majority of my reading. And then after the night prep, when we retire back to the hostel, I do a little reading in the night from 30 minutes to one, one hour. hour. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, cumulatively in the day, you get to like three, four, five hours of reading or six hours of studying? Yeah, yeah. So you study like six hours every day? Yes. Hmm. Well, tell us about your school, Deeper Life High School. 
Because the school seems to have a reputation for producing geniuses like you. Uh, what is the school environment like? What kind of teachers do you have? Because Deeper Life High School, Deeper Life High School, everywhere, you know, doing so well. Tell us about the school. Okay, let me start with the teachers. We have excellent teachers in my school. I have, I don't know, I've never seen teachers like the ones we have in my school. They're so, they are so willing, so, they want, they want us to succeed at all costs and they are willing to make any sacrifice. Some of them, they come over, they live in the school, they, they leave like their houses or wherever they are staying as early as maybe 5 or 6 a.m. and then they can go home as late as maybe 10 or 11 in the night just trying to teach us, to drill us, to make sure that, okay, these children are set and prepared for this exam. This school environment is, we are very involved in spiritual activities. I don't know, we pray, we have services. The environment is conducive is good for us as learners. Yeah, the school is always trying to provide for us to make sure that we are okay in all senses, morally, spiritually, physically, health-wise, emotionally, in all those areas. So the school is a very good one. Yeah. Fantastic. I right, so in terms of the next steps for you, your mom said that you love reading. In fact, you're going to pursue the arts, that you love literature. And I say that because Dr. Bati is, you know, and you're an expert and want to look, forward, look up to and a mentor in that regard. Definitely, he, he has that. But you decided to go with the sciences, chemical engineering. In fact, in your results, you got 99 out of 100 in chemistry, 98 out of 100 in maths, 97 out of 100 in physics, and then 66 in English language. That's impressive. Would you at any point consider, so are you still going for chemical engineering? Yes, you chose UNLAG, University of Lagos, as your um, university of choice. Is that still your choice? Because I hear some other universities are trying to woo you through scholarships and the likes. And then you also say you want to study, go forward to your master's, PhD. What yes. are your plans? What do you want to do? Well, I think you said it all. Yes, I'm going to UNLAG, but I'm actually considering other options apart from Unilag, but like Unilag is my first choice of university. And then I'm going to study chemical engineering. And then after that, I'm looking forward to a master's outside the country and then my PhD as well outside the country. So those are like my plans. And then for me, reading is not something that I may want to pursue like academically. It's more of a hobby for me. It's like my greatest hobby my, I don't know, what I love to spend my time doing. I love reading literature. Any book I see, I just pick it up and I start looking at it. So it's like a hobby for me. So environment matters in the greatness of somebody. You couldn't have done all of this without the input of your parents. Yes. What role did they, help, did they you know, uh, play in building this reading culture in you as we speak today? And how can we build that reading culture in our Nigerian society? Because our problem is we don't read. We are not the society that reads any longer. How can we help build that reading culture in society? Uh, the role of your parents first, then how can we generally improve reading culture and education in Nigeria? My parents, they were my encouragers, as well as my school. But my parents, they were always encouraging me, always supporting me. You know, we have, it, I'm a border, so they allow our parents to call us during the weekend and then my parents, they never miss a weekend, always calling, always trying to find out how I am, encouraging me, supporting me. And then during my SS3, I actually did not really have any holidays, but the few that the school gave us, Anytime I go home, my mom is like, my parents, my mom and my dad, they are always on my neck. They don't, they don't want to allow me to rest. They're like, come see, go and pick up your books. You can also tell them how much you love them and what they mean to you on live TV. It will be good <laughs> and speak to them. Um, I love my parents. Everybody loves their parents. I love you can tell them how much you, it's on live TV. <laughs> I love my parents a lot, actually. My mom, my dad, I love them. And they mean the world to me, actually. So, yeah, I love them. Okay, so how do we improve on the reading culture nationally now and education in general? What are those things you feel that students that have not the opportunity you have, 
how can they be better? You know, how can we improve them and improve the reading culture? Well, I feel even if, um, despite like efforts and everything, when if someone wants to succeed, it's a matter of determination and choice. So, but you know, how they can improve the reading culture, they can maybe, maybe in schools where students are, they can create like set times for them to read and they're like, okay, you, during this time and this time, you guys have to read, you have to pick up your books. And then they should also encourage them to be determined to succeed because me personally, I feel like despite the efforts that anyone puts in the environment, the parents, whether or not a student will succeed is a matter of their decision, their choice. If a student is like, okay, I want to succeed, I want to achieve success, the student has to be determined, the student has to choose to succeed. And then after the student has made that choice to succeed, the student has to you know, put in the effort. So determination helps with that. But then the environment of the students can also help by you know, encouraging them, throwing in incentives from time to time, and you know, just helping them, supporting them, well, something quickly, like that. You've been quoted as saying you admire uh, uh, Pastor Kumuye yes. and also Dr. Ben Carson. We would like to talk briefly about those two role models. Mm. Gifted hands. Yes. <laughs> you read the book. I have. Okay, let me start with Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Ben Carson is one of my role models, yes, because he, despite his background, despite where he came from, he has achieved so much. I think I've read all his books, Gifted Hands, Think Big, The Big Picture. I've read those three books. And then when I read those books, I feel so inspired. And I'm like, okay, I want to be like this man. And then Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumi, he's my greatest role model. Like when I, you know, I, he's the proprietor of my school. so. We have like services, deeper life services in my school. And then anytime he comes up on stage to preach, I'm always awed by how he carries himself, how he talks, how he's not afraid to say what needs to be said and how great he is and the respect that people have for him. I've not met him personally, but I would really like to. Wow, well, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Pastor Kumuyi himself will invite you yeah. as a superstar, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, promoting his legacy with your distinction. Absolutely. Really. Well, thank you so much, Kamsi Ochuko and Kechi Yere Ume, for your time with us this morning. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you on The Morning Show.